Election Night on your election headquarters. It's the tense climax of a long and heated presidential race. I place my destiny in your hands. Yet it's a castle. It's what come there. Your election headquarters. Election Ghanaians are waiting for the last word on who will occupy the front. The fight for the president. We are not going to give them another four years. The battle for parliament. We need PPP members in parliament. Bring in a good swaddle and the MPP to lift our country up and get Ghana working again. Get Ghana all the going. issues, all the angles, all the results on the longest night of the year, from the first vote to the final vote. President Mahama does not have the political will. President Mahama, the first to know election night on your election headquarters. A comprehensive coverage of the 2016 elections on your election headquarters on TV, on radio, online and mobile. Madam Charlotte to say essentially uh, thanking all her staff and the presidential candidates and the political parties uh, for helping make today largely a successful uh, day of polling across the country with a very few exception of you know areas where we always have uh, in any elections, but largely he's been significantly successful in many places across the country. And he's, she's just reaching out uh, to express appreciation uh, to the rest of, uh, of, 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 the, of the staff. Let me quickly get uh, my, my, um, my institute guests in, in, into this conversation. So we just say shout out to say that, just reaching out and saying thank you. Um, you could see for her, because already in the last, what, <coughs> one hour before we heard from the EC communication officers and the directors, issue a press statement, address a press. Then she comes and says, essentially, thank you yeah. to the rest. She, yeah. she, you get a sense there that she appreciates that this yeah. has, gone, has yeah. gone pretty well. Obviously, I mean, she's been under intense pressure. So I'm sure this will come as a relief for, him, for her. I mean, I think she assured us, she continued to assure us of, you know, making sure that the, the, the process will be smoother than what we had in the special vote. And then truly, too, it had been much more smoother than what we, we, we thought earlier. So I think this kind of uh, has come as a, as a relief. And it's a very good thing that she's actually addressing stakeholders and to say that we appreciate the, the support that you actually you know, put through and that we are uh, grateful. I think she must also admit sometimes you know, to apologize for some of the things mm -hmm. that has gone on because obviously we haven't had it entirely fantastic. Obviously okay. it's a process that we, can, we can't mm -hmm. have 100%. Okay. So they probably have to you know, uh, acknowledge some of the yeah. areas that have been hitches and yeah. apologize. And, sort of calm people down and say, you know, we're making sure that everything goes okay. through. So I, lo I love the, the, the interaction. How much credit do you give her? I mean, this is her putting her face on this and saying, mm -hmm. thank you, I'm in charge here. Yeah. Without actually saying that. <laughs> I, love, I love her being in charge. I love people being in charge. Mm -hmm. But I think she's growing fast. If you notice, the last few days or weeks, it's been like it's just one person who is the EC. But, but it's always been like that. No. For example, epitomizing no. But you realize that today and yesterday, you've had other That's members true. of the EC addressing the public, mm. taking on issues. So it's a team. And now she comes in to say thank you. It, it, it puts the icing on the cake. Mm. That is what I call it's a team. Mm. And you see, we were talking about 28% were not able to vote, and so 72% voted, and it was a success. That, that's I, the special vote. That was yeah, a special vote, and I warned that, check, 28% of 15 million, mm. 
that would be it's a recipe a for disaster. Mm, and that is why that big sigh of relief mm. for her, for us, for everybody, everybody. Yeah. we can all breathe a big sigh of relief. But, but she's proved that doubt was wrong, has she not? Yeah. No, and, and I give her the kudos. Yeah. In fact, the, 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 peace, the, the peace council mm. gave her a B plus. Yeah. I'm really, you give her one. I am really, really hoping that by the time we finish, it's going to be an A minus. <laughs> Look, I, yeah. I believe in people being successful. At this, yeah. at, this, at this particular moment in time, your score is? I will go with a B plus. Mm. Okay. So yeah. far, so good. Yeah. So far, so very good. Apart from these minor issues that were not really EC's problem. I wouldn't say her problem. I want to take away at the face. It's a team. Yeah. It's a team, you know, mm. it's not the EC's doing. Mm. And where the EC was, they apologized, they accepted, they reacted very fast. Mm. And let me say, kudos to the police. Fantastic job. Kudos to the police. These are our boys and girls in uniform. And they have had to bite their tongue. Some of them couldn't vote. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And, and they were very happy about it. Yeah. Kudos to them. Yeah. And, and we, in as much as we bought All the them, threats of if we're not going to vote, we are not going to be deployed. Yeah. Said, None of that yes. today. Kudos. And like we said, I appealed to the, the, the command not to punish those who mm. misspoke. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah. it was an emotional thing. Absolutely. And you see how they are performing today. Yeah. Mm. No guns, being very friendly with the people, keeping things at the back so that people are at ease yeah. with ourselves. Yeah. Kudos. Yeah. Well, well thank you very much. And your score is? Yeah, I think I, I should go with the B plus. And the, the B plus. plus. Yeah, B but plus. But he's saying this is B plus yeah. provisional. I, yeah, exactly. Provisional so results. Yeah. <laughs> provisional. <laughs> provisional. Yes. Yeah, so, so that's no, no, why, no, no, you, no, no, why, that's okay. why you've done your IA <laughs> after the exam. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go. Thank you very <laughs> much. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor um, Kobe Mensa uh, from the University of Ghana. Thank you very much. Um, Captain uh, Budukum Singh, uh, we also, uh, you know, given us your the benefit of your analysis. I'm grateful that you joined us. Um, we'll quickly, um, we let's go live now to Ashaiman. Let's go live now to Ashaiman. Let's uh, get uh, uh, let's connect uh, to my colleague uh, um, Matilda Omega, who has the very latest uh, from that constituency, a very hot constituency. Matilda, what, what's the latest from your constituency where you are? Evans, I must say that uh, results are coming in from the over 200 uh, polling centers within the Ashaiman constituency. The large crowd you see behind me is a cross section of residents of Ashaiman who have gathered here at the coalition center, which is the Ashaiman district police headquarters, to witness uh, results coming from all the polling centers. But I must say that uh, one interesting development here, which is raising some form of agitation among uh, some residents and party agents here at the coalition center in Ashaiman is that uh, a presiding officer uh, from uh, St. Mary's School uh, came here without his ballot boxes. According to him, after voting and counting, uh, a van came in to pick the ballot boxes, but they do not know where the car headed to. And he arrived here without the ballot boxes, which is raising some concerns among uh, uh, party agents here but, and please are trying to resolve uh, this matter as you can see in the visuals there a large section of them gathered there trying to get some answers as to why he didn't report to the coalition center with his ballot boxes but apart from that let me bring you some results from Weta Union number 1A uh, parliamentary results NDC which happens to be and a snog bay uh, recorded 159 159 159 159 votes and then we have an uh, MPP Laraban Yakubu Bari who had 168 votes APC Yakubu Musa had one vote CPP 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 uh, ha had We have CPP Hamda uh, Damda had one vote, uh, PPP Kojo Ata Aite had two votes, rejected ballot four, total vote cast 335. Then we move to presidential. PPP had two votes, NPP 172, NDC 157, 
PNC had zero, CPP one, NDP zero, independent zero, rejected ballot five. Total vote cast 337. So Evans, this uh, result coming in from uh, Weta Union number 1A, but as I'm saying that uh, a large number of uh, residents of Ashaiman have gathered here at the coalition center to witness uh, the coalition of results from the over 200 polling centers here within Ashaiman. I have with me uh, uh, Chapman, one of, uh, uh, let me say, party agents here. I realize that uh, MPP uh, Secretary for Ashaim, I realize there's been a lot of issues back and forth uh, with uh, the results coming in from Ashaim. And what exactly is the issue? So far, so good, I may say. But um, we only have an issue with one of our polling stations known as Weather Union. The presiding officer came here without the election material, which has brought a lot of confusion here. But I think everything is in order. I've just spoken with the lecturer. Um, electoral Commission, the director for the EC in Ashama, and he has assured me that everything is in order. So I've also tried to speak with my agent to see if the results the presiding officer has brought here is what exactly he gave them, what exactly, um, um, exactly the result that was, was declared at that police station. But I've not been able to reach my agent, so I am unable to confirm the results he has brought to the coalition centre to be the certified result for that very station. Okay. But apart from that, everything has been smooth so far. Yeah, in the morning there was a little confusion, but I think we solved it amicably because yesterday, before we left the police station where the election materials were dispatched, the Electoral Commission told us that the accreditation, this very tag, wasn't ready, that we should pick them up this morning at the uh, office. Okay. But before we got to the, our agents got to the field, we saw that the NDC, our opponents, have gotten the yes, meaning overnight they have released it to the okay. our opponents. Uh, let, let's look at uh, the, the exercise so far. I know generally uh, most polling stations that I have visited has been calm. Uh, what has been your observation? Yeah, I'm also impressed about um, uh, how the election went about in Ashama because Ashama has been touted as one of the flashpoints. But I'm glad that now that the polls have closed at almost all the centers, we've not heard of any confusion or any chaos in any of the stations. So I may say it's, it's, it's a good exercise. At least there are some people who have lived up to expectation, and I commend them for that. Thanks a lot, Chapman. But Evans, as we speak now, uh, election officials are currently counting the special vote in which happened uh, over a week ago. So uh, they are still trying to get uh, the result of the special voting. Then when all the results are in from the 227 uh, polling centers within Ashaiman, then the final coalition will begin, Evans. Uh, explain something to me I can see in your background. I see among the crowd uh, individuals carrying ballot boxes. Um, are these boxes containing counted, sorted out results that have been already announced at this, coalition cent at this polling center on its way to the coalition center? Hello, Matilda, can you hear me? Okay. Okay, we don't have uh, Matilda's attention uh, yet. Uh, we just lost her briefly on the telephone line. But it's interesting uh, seeing the pictures uh, on our screens. Several ballot boxes on being carried. Some of them, one, of, one person carrying two ballot boxes. And my only assumption, based on my own experience with the voting process, is once at the coalition, at the, at the polling center, they've counted and sorted out. It has to be transported uh, to the, the coalition center there. Um, Okay, can we get Matilda back online to explain a few things for us if we can? Because it's interesting viewing these pictures, but I, I have a few other things, uh, questions to ask so we can explain uh, what is happening. But I understand this are the, this are the coalition, this rather is the coalition center um, where the ballot boxes are um, for their shaman constituency. That will be, that will be interesting because um, our polls end at a five o'clock. Um, what it means is that almost, almost all of the uh, polling centers are now ready to bring in 
uh, their, their you know, boxes into the collation center. All these boxes will then be opened, uh, sorted and counted again at the collation center. That then gives you the, const the, the constituency picture. Uh, as far as that uh, coalition center and that constituency is concerned. And um, th that's why we're seeing the, the visuals on TV right now with uh, several ballot boxes that are being carried, with people, uh, of course, milling around, very interested to find out who is going to win that constituency. A very interesting constituency, Sherman. I want to quickly tell you a bit about, about that particular area. It's, it's a very interesting place uh, to observe. And my colleague, Raymond Aqua, uh, will be joining me very shortly on the touch screen, uh, walking us through the, the trends and analysis. But I need to tell you something about the Shaman uh, Shaman constituency as far as the NDC is concerned. Uh, this is a constituency that uh, the incumbent member of parliament is Alfred Agbishi. You know that name because he is the deputy majority leader uh, in parliament. But what happened to him in the primaries? He lost the primaries and he lost it by a significant margin to an individual called uh, Nogbe, who secured 5,171 votes as against the incumbents 1,745 votes. That's a huge, significant margin. And to think that um, the, the, the deputy majority leader in parliament would do so poorly uh, in his own primaries in a constituency such as Simon, uh, of course, raised a few eyebrows. People stood up and took notice of this gentleman who took over from him. And he's a, he's a name on the on the sheet now for the NDC in a shaman. And um, the interesting thing, though, about this, uh, uh, this particular area also in a shaman, it is, it's a pretty tense area Anytime it comes to elections. It's a place you definitely would like to focus a bit more. Alfred Agbishi, uh, Agbishi himself alleged that he lost only because of monocracy in the MPP, in the NDC. And he felt that his, uh, his opponent had, uh, had bought votes uh, in that particular part of, of the country in a shaman, and that's why uh, he claims that he lost there. And so that's an interesting constituency uh, to watch, uh, watch there. Um, it's one of the areas that we'll return to when uh, we get, um, we get uh, Matilda back on the telephone line. Now that the back ballot boxes are the collation center, um, we can realistically expect um, the, the constituency picture to start emerging in the next two hours or so. So you want to stay with us because we're bringing you the very exclusive details on this as far as uh, the election results are concerned uh, from Ashaman, from across the country as well. We are waiting for press conferences uh, by the NDC uh, called tonight. Um, we'll be there live and bring it to you. We're not missing anything tonight. You want to stay with us as far as uh, the coverage is concerned. Now, um, we have been joined by another crack team of experts uh, ready to help us analyze uh, the next uh, few hours. We just cross over now into, into 8 p.m., uh, approaching very steadily when we get to hear the results from the constituency collation centers. And with me, to build up to that uh, on election night, Dr. Edward Brenya is a lecturer, history and political uh, studies at the KNUSC. Hello, Doc. Also with us uh, tonight is uh, Dr. Franklin Odro. He's a deputy director at the uh, Center for Democratic Development, CDD. Uh, also uh, the project manager of Codeo. Uh, it's important we have a Codeo person with us uh, this evening because now is the key time to start uh, looking at uh, the process as it's gone so far, but also as reports coming up, um, you know, counting, examining the process, et cetera, and transparency issues. They have done their own monitoring today. They held a press conference, give us a briefing um, you know, in regards to one of the key areas that has been postponed today in the in the German North Coast, they, they told us about it. We had reported it, but they also reaffirmed that. And so it's important to have him in the studio. But, so I want to start with you, uh, Dr. Franklin O'Drew, uh, as far as um, these many issues that we are getting from across the country are concerned. First of all, tell me, uh, could you been doing your monitoring? We just heard from the Electoral Commission chairperson who is congratulating the EC officers, the political parties, the security agencies, saying thank you to the media or everybody who played a part in this. Um, the question to ask is, too early to be sounding confident about the process or is justified to put your best foot out and say we've done a good job today based on your own monitoring? What would you say? Well, th thank you, Evans, and good, good evening to your viewers, and I believe you're on radio as well, right? Yes, you're on so radio, we're to, online to, as well. To your, to your listeners and, and those uh, internet uh, folks, people. Um, I, I think uh, it is not too 
uh, early to to commend those who have played uh, a role uh, thus far. Um, as you know, there are at least four stages in 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 the electoral uh, elections on a polling day. Uh, you you can talk about the opening and the setup. Uh, if things don't go well, if you know from the opening, uh, it can affect the voting mm. and it can affect the counting. Uh, then you move to the voting process. Then you move to the counting and then the tabulation. So at least these four main stages, um, each of them is important uh, on election day. And so I think what has happened is at least the first two phases of that, uh, how early materials can get to polling stations, that is the setup, uh, and how voting, the procedure, the process of voting, uh, you know, took how, how it happened. And I think on those two stages, uh, I think it's, it's important that if we do well, we need to commend people. You have the role played by security personnel. You have a role played by election officials, uh, by voters themselves. In fact, we, the voters, and, and of, of course, other stakeholders like observers, the media, uh, and all of us, if we're able to you know, get those two stages passed, then I think it's fair uh, to commend us, but at, at the same time remind us that uh, we still have two more important stages. Mm. The counting process, and of course, as you said, the tabulation and the declaration of results. These two are also critical uh, in, in, uh, on election day. So I think as far and, and more importantly, uh, if you look at the trend, um, at least based on what Kodeo observed uh, up to the close of pools, uh, things have gone well generally. Uh, the process uh, has been orderly. Um, there, have, there have been few uh, lapses and, and issues and uh, challenges. But overall, uh, polling started generally well at most polling stations, uh, at least by eight. 8.30, most polling stations had, had opened. Um, you know, we didn't hear a lot on shortages of materials. In fact, what surprises me, and I think we need to commend Greater Accra election uh, officials. Uh, if you recall, in the past, Greater Accra being the capital, the center, and then being close to you know, election headquarters, always had materials you know, late, delivery of materials at polling stations. This year, I think they've done well. Uh, we didn't hear a lot of shortages of material, late start of polling stations in, in, in most polling stations in Greater Accra. So I think overall, um, it's a plus, and we need to commend um, Ghanaians, we need to commend voters, and all of us who have played a role in that. Yeah, uh, Dr. Brenya, your, your quick take on this so we can move on to other things. Your observation of the day so far, the EC says thank you, patting themselves on the back essentially, but as we've heard, in fact, this is the third time we've had my guests have all agreed that it's it's uh, is worth it. It's, yeah. uh, they, they deserve a pat on the back for what Absolutely they've done yes. today. Um, Dr. Andrew has said a lot, and just to add, the manner at which they even came out to address issues. You see what happened at Jammer North, and immediately they come out with press statements, they are on the ground monitoring everything that goes on, and I think their management of issues that have come out so far is a plus, so I totally agree with what uh, the comment that he made so far. Okay, great. And, and what we'll be doing more analysis of uh, how the day had gone so far as we get uh, more uh, details from across uh, our correspondents uh, coming in very shortly. Now, one of the key things you're watching uh, in this hour, obviously, is uh, the results that are going to come in. And uh, Raymond is almost ready uh, to start doing some of the analysis uh, of, um, of these uh, constituencies. What what you don't know is happening at the election headquarters is a big team of experts, um, mathematicians and accountants, etc. a huge team, uh, going through several of the reports coming in of the results. And we are keying that into a software that will essentially be telling us very shortly uh, how the trends are beginning to pan out in some of the key, key constituencies um, very shortly. So we'll be, we'll be giving you a clear sense at the constituency level, how the race is beginning to look, um, building up to the final uh, official declarations from the Electric Commission um, and, and making some projections also. So you want to stay with us here on your election headquarters because we'll bring you that exclusively um, here on your election. This is, this is the part of the elections that you don't want to lose sleep because this is where uh, you know, hearts begin to race, uh, but also the results, um, you know, concrete, concrete outcomes uh, begin to emerge. Uh, shortly, 
uh, we'll take a, we'll take a break, and when we return, um, we will move into the next phase of the conversation. More analysis based on results from the ground um, using the touch screen and our own, of course, um, you know, projection and trends uh, of today, uh, but also comparing it to what has happened over the last few years. But then also getting our experts uh, to weigh in. Uh, the best political team on radio, on TV, online will be with you right now here on your election headquarters. Stay with us. This is your election headquarters on Joy 99.7 FM, also live on the Joy News channel, Multi TV, live on my Joy online.com. My name is Evans Mensah. I have a, a crap team of experts sitting right next to me about to analyze the results that we are getting. Raymond Aqua is standing by at the Magic Wall. We're getting uh, the Coalition Center results for the presidential uh, elections. We've put all that so far that we have into our software and we are beginning to see uh, what it's uh, showing uh, as far as uh, the results for the presidential uh, concern. We're bringing that to you in a moment. But before I do that, I want to take a breaking news story, uh, some developing story uh, from Justice Beiru, uh, who joined us live from Ayawaso East uh, Cuba polling station. Hello, Justice. Hi, Evan. What, what can you report from the polling station where you are? Right. So I am at the Nima Police Station, which is the policing centre for the Ayawaso East constituency. Now, uh, we're just um, having all the, the polling stations come in with their, with their final results. Now, for the Cuba Islamic School um, polling station, which is one of the polling stations here, there is an issue with the parliamentary vote um, in, the, in, the, in the sense that the NPP agents are, are saying that when they finished counting, when they finished counting for the parliamentary vote, there were three ballot papers that had been thumbprinted. But then they were more than they, 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 that those three ballot papers exceeded the amount of, um, of of papers that were recorded as having been voted at the beginning of the poll. So they want those um, because of those three extra papers. They want that whole, um, the result from that station cancelled out as well because of overvoting. But then the NDC agent and then also the, the, the police station officer also is just saying that because those were, they want to treat those as um, false ballots. Because, that, that it didn't, because it didn't affect the presidential vote, um, it shouldn't be treated as overvoting. Uh, just, so just, 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 just a second, just a second. Just a second, yeah. let's, let's, take the, let's take the information bit by bit. Let's break it down so people can understand. So first of all, they found what? Extra ballots in the box? What is it? So, so the, these, were, these were not necessarily extra ballot papers. So there's a, a bit of confusion in terms of what exactly the information is. Mm -hmm. they, are not, they are not extra ballot papers. From the way they are, they are like, they've, they've been time printed. They've been time printed. Well, where, so where, did they, where did they, they find these? They might have arisen as a result of the counting process. Where did they find these time printed, their time printed ballot papers? They, yes, they were, they were from the, the, the boxes when they were put, the, the, the papers were pulled out. Okay, so they were, they were in the process of sorting the ballots. Yes. And they found, of course, all the ballot papers in the box when they, so will be time printed anyway. So I'm trying to understand what the, what the, what the issue is. Yes, so, so, so the, the, the polling officer is saying that this is probably a result of a mix-up during the counting process. Mm. So they are insisting that either it gets recounted or they, they sort of treat it as what rejected ballot. But then the MPP wants the, the whole thing cancelled out outright. They, they are not in for any recounting. Okay, I, and that, I, is the, that is the problem I here. Saw so a bit more, I saw a bit more. I mean, I, I'm, I'm struggling to grasp the full extent of the situation there. So again, I want to go through the whole process with you. So they, they, they pour the box, they, they open the box, they pour it onto a table, they sorted it out. Did they count the ballots? Yes. Yes, okay. they counted. They so counted. They, they finished counting the ballots? Yes. So at what point did an issue emerge? So it was at the point when they were counting for the parliamentary. When they were so, counting so, for the parliamentary. So they finished counting for the presidential. There was no the issue. The presidential and the, and, the, and the papers were intact. Okay, so there was, the, no, there was no issue with the presidential ballot. There was no issue with the presidential. Then they were counting for the parliamentary and then what happened? For the, for the parliamentary. And then for three, for, there were three extra ballot papers which, had, which, which were more than 
the ones that are discounted for the for the presidential. Oh, I see. Okay, now I understand yes. what you're saying. Yes. So what you're saying is, you you there must be um, if you, if you, the total number of people who voted for the presidential, there must be a match. Yes. Be, between that, there must be there must yes. necessarily yes. not be right. I mean the total whether for all the parties combined. Yes. Okay. So that is that is the the the, the, the confusion at the moment. So uh, what the polling station, um, the, the coalition center executive is mm. asking for is a total recount of that particular station in terms of the parliamentary vote. But then the MPP wants that the parliamentary vote cancelled out. They want the parliamentary vote cancelled. Yes. Because they, there were three extra ballots, yes. Um, yes. more more than the presidential more ballots. Than, more, more, yes. more yes. than the, the presidential, more than the, the presidential count. ballots. Okay. So w how is the EC officials trying to resolve this? Yeah. So so they, they are, it's still a still make here, Evans. No, because the MPP isn't compromising, and then the NDC isn't compromising either. But because it's at the at the coalition um, center, which is also at the Nima police station, there is enough security. Um, and we are just standing by and hoping to see what comes up um, in the next couple of minutes, probably. Okay. Ah, even. Okay. Justice, thank you very much. So that's, that's justice with that update uh, from the Yawaso East uh, Constituency. When we return very shortly, uh, I have the Kodeo officer with me here, the director of operation, who will walk us through what should happen uh, between the presidential and parliamentary, and uh, just making more sense of what we are hearing uh, from the Yawaso East. This is your election headquarters. Uh, and and I, I'm going to go to Elton very shortly, but I need to do a very quick thing just to explain what happened in Ayawaso East. I have with me, uh, thankfully, uh, Dr. Frank Lodrou, who is a project manager for Kodeo. Do you understand the point and the confusion there in, in Ayawaso East constituency, the discrepancy between the total votes for the presidential and the parliamentary? Yes, a, a little bit, but it, it requires more clarification. So there is, there is one part of it that's, that is ballot reconciliation, right? So at the end of voting, you have to reconcile ballot papers that were issued. Among those ballot papers that were issued, we include spoiled ballots, True. the total number of ballot papers. True. Now, if you go to the two boxes, you ideally you will expect that the total number of ballot papers that were issued, assuming there were no even spoiled ballots, mm -hmm. should be the same for both presidential and parliamentary, assuming all of them vote. Now, if there are more ballot papers in the parliament one box, what it means is that, well, maybe some people decide not to vote for the presidential. Now, the question will be, what are those ballot papers? It either has to be part of the spoiled ballot, so that you could see that, okay, there, so there were three people who spoiled their ballot, mm. and they didn't vote for presidential, but then they did it well for okay. parliamentary. So, so it's, it's not out of place to have a discussion. No, it's not. Okay. It's not. Let me, let me hold the horses but, but, on this. But you just need to account for that ballot. Okay, so that's, that's what they need to resolve then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's go quickly uh, to Elton John Brobe, who is live from the residence of Nanado Denkwa Kufado, standing by with the, with the latest update from the residence of the NPP presidential candidate. Hello, Elton. Okay, we've lost, um, we've lost Elton John Brobe there, uh, but we'll bring you that update. I told you already from the, at the start of the, uh, at 5 o'clock, that um, we will uh, be across the country in all these key areas. Nanado Denkwa Kufado's residence is one of the places we are tonight. We're also going to be... Uh, where the president, we're going to be with, uh, you know, of course, the uh, Dr. Papakwisi Indum and all the key uh, candidates in this particular race. Uh, remember that the election results update is brought to you by Magnan Shipping, uh, your total logistics partner, NNIT, enrolled for quality computer education in Ghana. Uh, election headquarters is refreshed by Papa's Pizza. Taste it, love it. Uh, Carbell Coffee, uh, smile and have a sunshine day. Uh, also tonight, uh, you know that um, your election headquarters uh, is live on radio. Joy 99.7 FM, Love 99.5 FM in Kumasi. Uh, Joy News Channel on Multi TV right now. Uh, channel 421 on DSTV. Live streaming on myjoyonline.com on mobile. We are also on social media. Our social media platforms, pay attention to this. Facebook slash Joy 99.7 FM.com. Twitter, hashtag Election HQ. And also Facebook Live. We are also live on our partner stations, ABN Radio in the United Kingdom. Uh, the world is watching, and this is where uh, all the official results uh, will resonate once we uh, begin to ha b build a full sense 
of what is unfolding across the country. Elton John Broby will be on standby very shortly with the very latest update from the residents of Nana Devka Kufaro. We'll get that for you uh, in this hour. Okay, uh, as you can see on the television, these are live pictures. Where? From Nana Devka Kufaro's uh, uh, residence? So that's uh, live pictures on our screens right now uh, from the residents of Nanado Dankwa Kofuado. Uh, we're expecting Elting to join us very shortly with the, with the very latest. He's been working his sources uh, in Nakam. And I said something at the top of the hour. Pay attention to this. All the parties tonight have their own way of assessing the results coming in. They will know how this is panning out before most people do. They have already deployed their men just as we've done. They are making their own collations and projections, and it's, it's good to start gauging the temperature in these camps. It gives you a sense of how this might be panning out um, on election night. And that is why it's key to go to LT and get a sense of what is happening uh, in the camp of Nanadang Kwa Kofuado. We'll do that very shortly uh, once he joins us. But let me return to the key conversation we're having about the discrepancy. And you, you might find these in many Calling, uh, polling centers, collation centers even, because we're talking about figures. Uh, Doc, that's an important thing. When you're talking about figures, um, sometimes you might replace a one with a five and mm -hmm. a one with a seven. Mm -hmm. It happens, and I think we've got to know about what it's called. Transpositional errors mm -hmm. is the key thing. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you simply need to recount and, and get a right uh, figure. We'll try and talk about it. Let's go to Elton. Hello, Elton. Can you, can you hear me? And what's the latest from the residents of Nanadang Kwa Kufado? Well, Evans, what is happening is that this place is serving as a center of assault for Nana Rodanko Kufuado and his campaign team. So uh, this place was set up about two hours ago. Remember, we are about three hours after pools closed. And already uh, results from the various polling centers have started coming in. Uh, depending on where it's coming from, it is either a jubilation or anguish for the various political parties. Uh, but here at Nanadu Adankwe Kufuado's office at Ridge, some party big ways are already here. Nanadu himself has, uh, has been here since afternoon. Uh, his running mate, Dr. Mamadou Baumia, came in about 30 minutes ago. Uh, Dr. Kofi Kunadu, a former trade and industry minister during the Kufu administration, is also here. And few other party big ways who are all locked up in a meeting upstairs. Uh, what I've picked is that they are also monitoring results from across the uh, the country there were 28,000 polling centers and they are also doing their own collation they are not waiting for the electoral commission to put together everything before uh, they can tell their followers what may be happening and what i've picked is that by morning they'll be able to tell the trend uh, at which the results uh, may be going whether it will be going in their favor or not so that's what is happening upstairs and and uh, and if we check from what is in front of us, they've arranged chairs, meaning that more people may be coming in, in as uh, the night you know, goes into day. And that's what is, and that's exactly what we'll be doing from now till the declaration is made and that we can pick his reaction, whether it will be uh, a victory speech or to concede. But from what I've picked from the, 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 the people who have Nanado, they are so far excited with the results coming from some of the polling centers, which has put them ahead uh, of the NDC in some of the polling centers that uh, they have reported so far. And uh, very soon I'll be speaking to Eugenia Hen, who is a special aide to Nana Okufuado, who just came all the way from that room. Uh, is the room tense? What is happening upstairs? Well, on the contrary, it's, it's quite calm. You know, yeah, all, 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 the, all the persons up there have, 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 have a calm disposition and well, he's just just monitoring the results and awaiting awaiting what what what, befall, what will befall all of us, God willing, in some few hours' time. So you can tell me what really is happening upstairs. Well, you have you have Nanaku Fado upstairs. Um, he has his running mate also, Dr. Baumia upstairs. He just he, he came back from the northern region some 30 minutes ago, and you have quite some people, some high leading figures of the party mm -hmm. who I didn't want to mention now also up there with him, and all of them are also. Um, monitoring the results. Let, let, let me put it that so way. As far as on your face, am I to say that all is looking good for the MPB at this stage? Oh, it's, it's, it's early stages yet. It's early stages yet. And at least from what is coming so far, we are, we are, we are cautiously optimistic that um, at the end of the day, 
when the results, the, fi the full count of the results coming, at least we should, we should, we should be looking quite good. But for now, it's, it's still early, early, early days yet. Yeah. And are you happy with the way things went? Uh, the pools, the counting, the declaration that we are witnessing, is there any concern? Oh no, well so far from the part of Nanek Vado himself, at least he's, he, he's, he's, he's quite okay with, with the, 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 the outcome of the poll so far. The conduct, it's, 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 it's been relatively smooth sailing, if you, if you, apart from maybe isolated incidents here and there, but on the whole he, he's quite satisfied with, with, with the outcome. So, so far. So from your own analysis, when are you likely to have a clearer view of what is to come as far as this election is concerned from your own coalition? Well from, from our part, we should say by by morning, by by in the, in the early hours of tomorrow morning. That's we should about have some seven hours seven away seven from hours, here. Yes, some, some some seven hours from now we, we should be able to make a projection. Exactly, because if, if I'm to look at what we have now and I'm I'm um, to let's say, extrapolate it to but maybe the, the number of hours we've gotten, the quantum of results we have now, as opposed to the full, the, the, the entire results in its, in its fullness. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking probably in some seven, eight hours now, at least we should have a good idea as to how, how the elections so would go. So that means we may have some constituencies declared as far oh, yes, but by, as provisionally by then, from your count. By, by, by then. By the, but now you don't have? No, no, but <laughs> even if I have, I can tell you. <laughs> but we, we, just, we, just, we just wait. I'm sure the, the Electoral Commission and the various... Um, district, elect, um, district officers of, of the electoral commission are also doing their, their work. Our party agents are also there. So I'm sure we'll, we'll just wait, but at least from our side, we, 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 at least we are, we, are, we, are, we are remaining vigilant. All right, so, so what will be the program like after everything here, seeing so many chairs here? Well, you've seen so many chairs here, but virtually almost all of them are empty. At least it tells you that our, our, our agents, our party people are, are not even bothering themselves coming here. They know that the work is at the polling stations and at various constituency coalition centers. So. I'm sure once everything is set and done, and if God willing, the, the, the results come are, are favorable. Let me put it out. If the results are favorable, definitely I'm sure you see, you see, you see this, whole, this whole place packed. Yeah. Another question would be, I know I've, I've, I've asked you before, so what is Nana doing now? Is it watching TV, catching up with old friends? What really, uh, what, what kind of conversation is ongoing well, right now? About me, you know, uh, just, uh, he's also monitoring the results. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Making calls, us to, like, just to... If, if there are certain things he's not so clear about, definitely he's, he's, he's in touch with, with the people on the ground, okay. the people from the various um, constituencies and the regional heads of the party, at least he's in touch with them, just to make sure that at least everything goes according to plan. You know, our general secretary has also issued a statement right. urging for um, continued vigilance, vigilance mm -hmm. yeah, in, in, in the final hours of the count. So that, 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 that's what we are all up to. All right, thank you yeah. very much, Eugene. And he is a special aide to Nana Adedankwa Kufuad. So, that's what's going to happen now. From their own counts and from their own analysis, they are hopeful that by morning they will be able to make a projection as to how the election is like, may likely to you know, uh, turn out uh, as far as this 2016 general election is concerned. And on our part, we're going to be here, Evans, uh, till everything is done with and we can pick reactions from the man himself uh, after everything is done and dusted. So that's Elton John Brobit live uh, from the uh, uh, NPP. Uh, let's call it the watch party. Uh, but tonight we have a key race alert. Elton, stay with us. I'll come back to you very shortly. Raymond Aqua is joining me with a key race alert uh, uh, with uh, the Magic War. Raymond, what do we know? So we do know that out of the 28,992 specific polling stations across the country, we have for 48 of these polling stations provisional numbers and the indications are clear here that's awesome some for 18,465 valid vote cast we can say Nana Kufado has 10,773 representing some 58.34 percent and in second race is John Dramani Mahama with 7,301 and that represents some 39.4 54 percent the ppp is next with 309 votes representing 1.73 percent and the cpp comes in with just 32 votes which represents 0.17 percent now dr edward mahama of the pnc has 20 votes with 0.11 percent and that's for the pnc nana kola of the ndp has 13 votes 
out of these 48 polling stations, it is just 0.07%. And the independent candidate, Jacob Osayabua, has just seven votes, which represents 0.04% of the mm. 18,465 valid vote cast that we are counting as we speak now. Uh, let, let, let's quickly clarify this. If you're listening to this, um, don't, don't, don't be too excited. Uh, just giving you a sense of what we have as of this moment here on your election headquarters. Remember, Raymond, we have what? Um, 28,992 yes. 92 polling, polling stations. stations. How many polling stations are we, do we have right now? That we're, 48 that, that shows of this these polling stations. Only 42 out of 28,000. Yes, 48 30, out of 28,000. 28, yeah. uh, and, 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 and so that is what the context of what we're just telling you is. And we'll be, we'll be updating this as and when we get it. But based on the uh, data we have so far from across the country, um, we have, uh, as Raymond just indicated, uh, um, so far from these, what, how many, 41, 40? 48, 48 out of the 28,992. From, from across the country, the indication we have is, just run it through the results again. As, as we have it on, 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 on our system. So if you see this particular 48 polling stations we're looking at, we're talking about Nana Donko Kufado having 10,000 of the votes, with the president having just 7,000 of these mm. votes. That okay. is the difference. Okay, and so that's, that's a key race alert that we have for you. And we'll be doing that across uh, the night, throughout the night, in fact, uh, bring you, as we will we'll update this um, regularly, and we'll be telling you what the trend is. And Nana Kufar, of course, we, with this, uh, at this very, very, very early, early stage of the process, what we've just brought you is that there's a drop, tiny drop in the ocean. These are provisional results uh, uh, across uh, these, uh, you know, polling stations. Of course, there's an update I've just seen, Raymond, mm -hmm. uh, that you just, when you, when you just refresh that page and we've updated it. Uh, what, what's, what's the current picture? Polling stations. Nanado has 57.84 percent with 11,024 of the votes, with President John Dramani Mahama in second place with 7,633, representing 40.05 percent of the vote. 50 out of the 28,992 polling stations. These are provisional results. Um, and the presidential results, remember, will not be declared in the polling center. It will come to Madame Charlotte to say, who is a returning officer for the presidential elections, who can make a proper declaration. And so uh, these are provisional results. But based on the provisional results that we have, over the last two minutes, we've updated it to 50 polling stations. Uh, as you can see there, Nana Danka Kufado is leading by what? What was what, the percentage that Nana Kufado is leading at this point? Nanada Danko Akufado, as I speak to you now, is actually leading in the race with 57.84% as president comes in next with 40.05%. This is just based on 50 polling stations. And so don't, don't make too much of, of it at this stage yet. Because we are putting a bigger context of 28,992 polling stations. And so this is a huge drop in the bucket. I don't know if I, I can go back to Elting, who is standing by. Uh, the Nado Dankwa, uh, Nado Dankwa Kufa, those residents, and essentially there's a watch party uh, for the MPP there. Uh, do we have Elting on the line? Okay, we need to bring back Elting. Let's get a sense of whether they, they are, of course, they are watching this on your election headquarters. What sense are they getting themselves? Is that a reflection of what they also have on the ground? We're trying to get uh, for you the N NDC's own reaction to this. We know they are holding a press conference very shortly on very important issues. Elton will join me very shortly and have a conversation about the reactions as we begin to have uh, these initial results coming from across the country, uh, you know, across some of these polling stations. Uh, again, let me emphasize, what we're bringing you right now as far as these key rates are less concerned are just a tiny drop in a big, mighty ocean. Um, we are just in, we haven't even begun yet to build um, a proper picture. We have updated it again, have we not, um, yes, and, uh, we Raymond? Moved one step with 51 out of the 28,992 polling stations. And uh, uh, the slight decrease in Nana Dunkel Kufa's percentage, it was 57, now it's 56.63. And the president has inched up a little bit from what used to be 7,000 votes to 8,084, now representing 41.30% of the votes. Mm.
Very well, thank you very much. Everyone will stay with us throughout as we update that uh, uh, magic wall there. And we have a whole team working on this, trying to collect all the results from 275 constituencies uh, as it comes in. A shaman um, constituency uh, is coming in also. And this will be fed into the overall system that will then come out uh, in a form that Raymond has. In a shaman, for example, Union 1A presidential results, NDC 157. MPP 172 in that particular polling station in Ashaman. Uh, in other area, total uh, votes cast uh, in that particular part of town. PPP, for example, had two votes. CB had one, PNC had zero, five rejected ballots. Total vote cast in that particular polling station is 337. Uh, in the parliamentary NDC, uh, in that particular polling station in Ashaman, uh, 159 votes. Uh, that's uh, the NDC. The MPP has one six, uh, 168 votes. That's one polling station, Nashaman. Uh, and uh, CPP also, uh, of course, a you know, tiny amount of votes there, not even in, 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 in double digits uh, in Nashaman. Okay, let me come back into my studio right now. Uh, let's, uh, let's begin to get a sense. We, we first took you to the um, watch party, you call it in the US, a watch party of the, the MPP when Leonardo Danqua is locked up in a room with his executive. We understand there are chairs uh, there. That gives a sense that we are expecting people to troop in uh, as a night wears on. You can imagine they have all their screens on right and monitoring what we are doing. They also have their own way of assessing these, uh, this is the same data uh, that we have and we share with our listeners. Uh, but you, you, you listen to Elton John Broby. There's a sense there of re warm re reception of, of media people and, and journalists, but these are early days yet. These are early days yet, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely, yes. I mean, I think uh, looking at what is coming right now, it's good news. It's good news psychologically. That if good news if you are MPP. Yes, but, 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 but if you are NDC, you shouldn't be worried at all. Yeah. Because this is absolutely nothing compared to the global picture of 28,000 uh, polling stations. And so if I'm NDC, I won't be worried. If I'm MPP, I will be holding on to my, my chair, hoping that I keep this lead until tomorrow morning. Exactly, exactly. I'm saying that um, for the watch party at Nanado Dunkers uh, residence, it's good news, and the prayer is that it continue in that direction. But we also need to pay attention to which specific polling stations the results are coming from. That's true. That is where you have to pay attention. If they are coming from your stronghold, then you don't need to be that happy. Yeah. You probably need to be a bit skeptical saying, what would they be, be, be in the other area? Yeah. One of the things we'll be doing very short, Roman will join us. We are not going to break down, um, as you said, geographically, where these 50-plus uh, polling stations are coming from uh, and which figures they, they have. Um, and once that comes in, we get a better sense of where these are coming from. If it's coming from the Volta region, I'll be worried from N NDC. If it's coming from the Ashanti region, I'm NDC, I'm not really worried. Mm -hmm. But if I'm MPP and it's coming from the Ashanti region, again, I'm, I'll be neutral because Ashanti region naturally should give you these votes. Uh, again, but even if it's all coming from Ashanti region, I'll still be worried because the president is pretty close. If it's Ashanti mm -hmm. region, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be pretty excited about that if I'm NPP. So that's absolutely crucial um, as far as uh, the results are concerned. Um, now, let's have uh, a few more results that we have now um, as far as uh, some of the other constituencies are concerned. Uh, we have a shaman uh, Weta Union 1, which is what I announced earlier. We can talk about the Ablikuma South. Uh, that's the Kolebu uh, Police uh, Station C. Uh, for presidential, the MPP in that particular polling station had uh, 250, uh, 250 votes. Um, the NDC had one. 178. This is Kolebu Police Station C, uh, polling station there. Repeating the figures there, uh, 250 votes uh, for the NPP, the NDC 178. The CPP 0, PPP 3, PNC 0, NDP 0, NDP uh, I, in the independent 0. The total votes cast in this particular constituency, in this particular polling center, uh, the Kolebu Police Station C is uh, 436. Rejected five, total registered 649. So for the Kolebu polling, police station C, uh, polling station the MPP, um, the MPP won that. And now let's go to South Dai, and now we're going to the Volta region. This is stronghold of the of the NDC. South Dai, uh, Quebec Junction, Newtown polling station. The Quebec Junction, Newtown polling station. Presidential, CPP3, NDP1, NDC, 351, PPP 5, NPP 28, PNC 0, 
independent zero. Of course, now we're getting to understand where these uh, results are coming from. This is the stronghold of the N NDC and the margins there. Let me just isolate the two parties in that region, in that particular polling center. Uh, and this is the uh, Bever Junction Newtown polling station. I just want to isolate the two parties. The MPP there secured 28 votes in that particular polling station. The NDC, 300 and 51 votes. The rejected ballots there are four. Now let's go to the Ashanti region. Let's, let's, let's draw that contrast uh, with the Ashanti region polling, polling station. Let's go to Asawase constituency, uh, Kurem Central Mosque B, uh, presidential uh, provisional results that are coming in. Uh, CPP zero, the uh, NDP um, zero, the NDC uh, in that particular part of the, of the country, the NDC 152, 152. Um, PPP is two, the, in, the NPP had 214, 214. This is a Sawasi constituency, Kurem Central Moxby uh, presidential elections. And Raymond will be telling us why Sawasi is key for the NDC. Uh, this is one of the few areas in the, in the central region where NDC has a, a strong showing. Uh, in that Sawasi polling station, the NDC isolating the two parties, NDC secures 152 votes. As against the MPP's 214 uh, votes in that particular part of the Ashanti region. Let's stay with Ashanti region a bit, a bit longer. Let's stay with Asawasi constituency. And this will be the, um, the International School, uh, Mandesha International School, uh, presidential. Um, the international school there in, in Ashanti region. And here, the NDC secures, and this is a polling station. 123 of the votes as against the MPPs, 131. Now, all the other parties um, secured zero with the exception of the PPP who had two votes uh, in that part of the, of the Ashanti region there. Again, um, the, there's a close race in Asawasi again, but the MPP still takes that particular polling station. Let's, let's come to Greater Accra. Another key region. Now, key, Greater Accra is important. Greater Accra is a region, it's a swing region. It's the two most pure swing regions in Ghana. There are four in all, but only two most pure. In other words, those two regions accurately predict who becomes the president. Greater Accra is one. The next one uh, is a central region. Western region and um, the border half region, I mean, are not so pure because in, one, in, in certain instances, they especially during the runoffs, they vote for one person, they switch. But when it comes to the greater courage and central region, they are absolutely consistent, whether there's a first round or second round, they will consistently vote for the person who eventually becomes the president. That's why the uh, greater courage region is key. Let me go to the Clote Kole constituency. And Adabraka Presby Church polling station. Remember, I was born in Adabraka, and of course I was raised in Adabraka, so I know that place very, very well. The MPP, uh, the NDC secures 100 and 25 votes. The MPP secured 143 votes. The uh, CPP has two. The PNC has zero. The NDP has one. The PPP has four. The independent candidate in that particular uh, has zero. Remember, we had one independent candidate from the MPP who is standing also in that particular place. So it's true. It's important to see how this is doing uh, in that particular area also. And uh, when it comes to the parliamentary elections, but we're talking about the presidential for now. And so in the presidential elections in Klote Kole constituency, Adabaka Presby Church polling station, uh, NDC 125, MPP 143, uh, PNC 0, CPP 2, NDP 1, uh, PPP 4, Independent 0. Now, Achim Oda constituency, uh, Achim Oda constituency, Community Training School B, presidential. Uh, we have MPP 261, 261. NDC uh, 61, uh, CPP 0, PPP 3, PNC 1. Okay, and this is the NDP, 61 votes. Uh, the independent is 0. Um, and that is interesting in this particular polling station there. The MPP again wins this uh, significant margin, isolated the two parties. NDC secures 61 votes in this particular training school B uh, polling center. As against the MPP's 261. Let's go to Idra Sitre Dumasi constituency, Presby Church, uh, Idra polling station, presidential. MPP, 505 of the votes. NDC, 
126 CPP1, PPP2, PNC0, NDP0, uh, Independent 0. MPP wins that comfortably in that particular polling station. K2 South. Uh, K2 South. Uh, it's, uh, it's an important part of, uh, of the Volta region that we've also been bringing you reports of uh, some of the key activities in the Volta region. Uh, let's go to one polling station in K2 South. I keep on emphasizing one polling station because it's just one polling station. I don't want you to go out, uh, go away listening to this and thinking, oh, this is the constituency. No, no way. This is not a constituency. This is the polling center. In one constituency, you can have as many as 100 polling stations. So just use that when you put any weight on these uh, pol uh, polling, uh, polling station results that we are getting or putting in. Raymond will join me, though, because that will give you a global picture. Uh, we are feeding all this into one central location, and then it sort of generates for you what the picture is looking at nationally. We're going to do that throughout. We're giving you the key race alerts. So that's what you need to be paying attention to. But this can excite you if you are a diehard party supporter. So listen, uh, let me go to the, the Dak Pledu Community Polling Center A uh, in K2, K2 North. NPP 167, NDC 300. And 37. CPP 1, PPP 0, PNC 0, NDP 0, Independent 1. Uh, isolated the two parties in this particular uh, part of the Volta region, the Plenu Community Polling Center A presidential, the NPP 167, the NDC uh, 337 votes. And this is the in the Volta region uh, there. Now let's go to New Job in North, Methodist DHS. Um, and returning from the a stronghold of the NDC, let's go to the stronghold of the MPP. Uh, and this particular polling station, MPP 175, NDC 49. CPP 0, PPP 1, PNC 0, NDP 0, Independent 0. Isolating the two parties, MPP 175, NDC uh, 40, 49 there. So that's a new job. In. Okanko South, come back to Greater Accra. I've told you why Greater Accra is important, so watch it. Um, I've always said, analyzing politics in Ghana, if you isolate Greater Accra for me and cut out the rest of the country and give me results for Greater Accra alone, you can safely predict who's going to win the elections. Um, that is what history says. But we know that history sometimes can let you down. But if it's been so consistent since 992, it's pretty reliable predictor of who's going to win. Purest region. You can do the same for central region. You can cut out the rest of the country, get the two regions, Greater Accra Central, safely predict who will win. And I can tell you, in these closed-door rooms where the presidential candidates are, are holed up, they'll be waiting for final results from Greater Accra Region and Central. If they come in, whatever the outcome is from these two regions, great predictor of who's going to win this. So watch this very closely. We'll be bringing you uh, Greater Accra and Central Focusing a bit more there because that is the, is the best predictor of anything as far as election results are concerned. Okanko South, Greater Accra, Kanishi, Pentecost A presidential. I want to go through that quickly. CPP 1, NDP 1, NDC 288, PPP 4, MPP 309, PNC 0, Independent 0. Isolating two parties, NDC in this part of the Greater Accra region, 288 uh, of the votes there. The MPP... 309. Um, and as I mentioned, these polling stations, we are not analyzing the constituency yet. Why? Because it's polling station. When we start talking about the constituency coalition center result, we'll try and tell you, bring more analysis into the, into the game and look at Okankwe South. How important is it? The trend? Who was one of the past? What does it say about predictions? Key constituencies, even Greater Accra, are also great predictors of what might happen. One constituency, Colonel Corte, I mentioned that earlier. Great predictor, swing. Um, they sort of go with who is going to win eventually also. So even in Great Accra, there are places to watch. We'll do that for you. This is where you want to stay with us. This is why you want to stay with us. K-E-E-A, constituency. Now, I'm interested in this. Papa Kwesi Indom used to hold the seat. And so let's see how his, his party is doing there. Presidential. CPP 2, NDP 0, NDC 182, PPP 65. NPP 139, PNC 0, Independent 0. Now, I'm not going to isolate two parties here. I'm going to isolate three parties. Um, I'm going to isolate three parties for obvious reasons, as I've said earlier, because of the peculiarity of KEA. NDC 182, 
NPP 139, PPP, Dr. Papakwesi Indum 65. Again, I don't want to make any big pronouncements on one polling, one, uh, one polling center, uh, but make of that what you will. We'll get the official result for that constituency for you very shortly because we are, as I tell you, a team, a whole team is building this up for us. They, uh, our software will be uh, giving us a, 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 a better picture of this shortly. Efutu Simpaho Center B, Presidential, MPP 174, um, um, NDC 89, PPP 1, CPP 0, NDP 0, PNC 0, Independent 0. Uh, isolating two parties, MPP, and this is Efutu Simpaho Center B, MPP 174, NDC 89. Now, Gomwa West, Apam, Secondary School B, Presidential, NDC, 58, PPP 1, MPP 135, CPP 0, NDP 0, PNC 0, Independent 2, uh, Independent 0, isolating two parties, ND, NDC, 58. This is Gomwa West, Apam, uh, NPP 135. That is uh, what I have for you. And this is by way of just telling you the national projections, the national picture, as we built up earlier where this is coming, when they come back to your question, Dr. Brenya, um, I think what you can say from this is that what we put out there in the, in, in the machine, in, in the software, comes from all over the country. Okay. So it's very difficult to still make true analysis, whether to be happy or whether to be sad. It just to be, I think remaining neutral is best at this stage, because this is scattered all over the country. Bonahapu region, Greater Kara region, everybody's stronghold is involved. Exactly, but uh, when you look at it critically, you realize that uh, more of the stronghold of the MD MD MPP yeah. has actually, uh, That's true. we have more of that than that of the NDC. That's true. That's true. What, what's your own comment on, on, on this as, as, as I was reading and um, the global picture also as we saw it on, on, on our magic wall? No, I'm not, I, I largely agree with, with, with uh, Dr. Brinia and yourself in terms of um, you can't make much out of it. Yeah. Out of it. It's, it's too early in the day. Uh, it's preliminary. It's uh, isolated uh, polling station numbers from constituency level. Uh, so, um, you know, it's difficult to, to sort of uh, begin to point to the direction of it. But I think uh, if I were a political party, um, you know, I also begin to look at the various polling station data and compare with the previous election to see whether they've changed or okay. they remain the same. So are you increasing your votes or you're dropping? You're you dropping okay. you know, percentage wise. So you you know you you if, if you got a particular polling station number, you know, let me go back to twenty twelve to see how did I do? Did I win? Mm -hmm. Did I lose? Am I increasing? Even if I lost that particular polling station, has my vote Decrease or mm. increase. Uh, if I tell you that our software can do that, and we'll be doing that very shortly. That, we'll that pick some of these I polling think, stations and see the trend yeah. over the years. We'll yeah. do that very shortly. But yeah, yeah. you're making a point. Yeah. So I, th I think you know that if if you do that kind of um, analysis and you know it's, it's it's positive because you know in all these constituencies there are even though there are strongholds, mm. uh, it could be a stronghold constituency, but there are certain areas that are also stronghold within the constituent for a particular party. Mm -hmm. So a party that does not necessarily win all the polling stations, uh, set for this the strong, strong, strong holes like the voter or Ashanti region. And so you can also begin to look and see whether in the votes that are coming are coming from my stronghold within the constituency, or they are coming from areas that are not my stronghold and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of doing well. It, it begins to give you a sense of, you know, say, OK, uh, if I'm getting this from my opponent, Stronghold. The backyard of Malpona, yeah. Yes. Then, you know, uh, that's not a good chance. It means that I'm still going to get my vote and then, and then get uh, that, that for my opponent. So, um, first, it's too early, but I think, you know, you can still begin to do micro level analysis as to where are the votes coming from? Are they the same as 2012? Have they changed? What are the percentage loss or gain in terms of vote count? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Benya, that, that the parties are behind closed doors now. I mean, they fought a good fight. Now, really, there's nothing you can do than wait. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I mean, uh, uh, in political terms, this is the most painful time exactly. for, <laughs> for, for the candidates. Uh, but uh, that's uh, Dr. Frank Rodrigo's assessment of what they should be doing now, reaching out to get a better picture of issues than we have. 
I mean, is that you agree with that? That if if you were a political advisor to the president or John Dramani Mahama and or Nana Rudamka Kufado, and you you have a huge ground game right now going on, what what would your focus be now? Get, I'm reaching out to your polling agents. Polling it's, agents. Yes, the polling okay. agents, the observers. And I'm making sure that they are, uh, they are more vigilant, making sure they're giving you timely reports of, just as uh, Dr. Drew said, timely reports that will enable you to compare how you did in previous elections. Mm. So that begins to give you a feel of whether or not the end of it all is going to be nice or uh, is going to be the same story previous years. Yeah. No, I mean, if, if I can ask something in terms of what you know, both of us are saying now. If you, I was listening to Akrim, uh, yeah. polling station yes. in Aswansi, which uh, Aswansi generally is a stronghold of the NDC, NDC right? Yeah. One of those it, few areas in the Central yeah, region where they've they do taken well. it two or three, I think probably three yes. consecutive times. Uh, and if I, if the Akrim polling station that you know you read yeah. is, is what I picture, yeah, uh, which. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, you know, the NDC, Onra Mutaka, uh, Mubarak. Prab, Mubarak probably won in 2012. But that particular polling station, uh, from what you said, the provisional yes, figure, yes. Uh, majority went for the MPP. And so if I'm, I'm Mutaka, I'll, I'll begin to get worried that you know, this is a place that I, I get my votes and yeah. uh, a switch. If I'm uh, the MPP candidate, you know, I'll begin to have some joy as look, yeah. I'm beginning to penetrate to the NDC backyard. Uh, yeah. But so these are some of the micro level uh, mm -hmm. analysis that you yeah. know, parties can do to see where, yeah. where, where they could. And in fact, the point you're just making, I just want to emphasize that point again with bringing listeners, mm -hmm. those who missed out on, on the, the, the basis of your, of mm -hmm. your analysis. In fact, we had two polling stations from Asawase mm -hmm. alone. In both polling stations, MPP won. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so in, in, in Ashantri, in Asawase constituency, a Kareem Central must be. Mm -hmm. uh, NDC secures 152 votes mm -hmm. as against MPP's 214 mm -hmm. in a Kareem. Now, if you go to Asawasi constituency, uh, Men Mendesha International School Presidential. Uh, Mandaya? Yeah, okay, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Mandaya International School uh, Presidential. Again, NDC has 123 mm -hmm. as against the MPP's 131. So, in both cases, the MPP is winning. So, it'd be interesting to see those two police states, how they voted in 2012. In 2012. And then sort of see yeah. you know, if they see Because, because the even in the constituency, you have areas yes, yes. where ND, and MPP is strong. And so, yeah. you know, so it might yeah. possibly be that these areas, yeah, MPP, MPP is strong yeah. within an NDC See, overall constituency. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, so, we can join Araba Ryan. Araba is standing by from our collation center here at your election headquarters. He has the very latest results also coming in. Raymond will be joining me very shortly. Uh, all these results will be bringing you the global picture. Hello, Araba. What more results do you have? Hi, Evans. And uh, yes, the results are coming in thick and fast here at the election headquarters collation center. I'll run you through a few of the results we've gotten uh, on the presidential um, uh, outcome. And I'll start with the Ashanti region. The address at Chidumasi constituency, polling station, Idra Town Council B, presidential, NDC 74, MPP 315, PPP 1, NDP 0, PNC 0, CPP 0, and the independent candidate 0. The total registered number of votes is 522, and the turnout was 391. So that is for the polling station in Jura Town Council B in the Jura Dumase constituency. Also in that constituency, polling station in Jura Town Council A, presidential NDC 57, NPP 328, PPP 0, NDP 0, PNC 0, CPP 0, as well as the independent candidate. He obtained no votes at all. The total registered number of votes, 511. The turnout was 386. So 386 people turned out to vote. There was one rejected ballot. Uh, again, in Idra uh, Sechidumasi constituency, and this time the Idraman SHS presidential and DC 113, NPP 248, PPP 4, CPP 0, the NDP 0, PNC 0, and the independent candidate 
also did not obtain any votes. The total registered uh, votes, 520, and the turnout was 372. Rejected ballots, 7. Let's turn our attention to the Bono Ahafu region now and uh, Tano North constituency to be specific. Dwaya Nkwanta presidential, MPP 352, NDC 35, CPP 1, PPP 5, PNC 1, NDP 0. The independent candidate received no votes and uh, there were no rejected ballots as the total um, votes cast 394. Also in Kintampo North, still in the Bono Ahafo region, at the community center um, polling station, presidential results, CPP 1, NDP 1, NDC 90, PPP 5, MPP 265, PNC 0, independent candidate 0, Valid votes cast, 362. Rejected ballots, 6. To the eastern region now, and Ekropong constituency, Mamfe South polling station, presidential, NPP, 223. NDC, 50. PPP, 1. PNC, 0. NDP, 0. CPP, 0. Independent candidate, 0. And there were no rejected ballots. Total registered votes, 387. In the northern region, Sola Tuna Kalba constituency at the Zongo PWD Sola polling station. Presidential, NDC, 268. NPP, 144. There were eight rejected ballots. The PPP obtained five votes. NDP, two. PNC 0, CPP 2, and the independent candidate 0. The total number of votes cast 429, and total number of registered voters 710. In the Upper East Region, Navrongo Central, Social Welfare A Polling Center, CPP 0, NDP 0, and that is for the presidential, NDC 189, PPP 11. NPP 260, PNC 0, and the independent candidate obtained no votes. Total votes cast 460. There were eight rejected ballots. To the central region now, Ifutu constituency to be specific, and at the Presby Primary School polling station, presidential, CPP 0, NDP 0, and DC 80. PPP 5, NPP 191, PNC 0, independent candidate 0, total votes cast 276. In the Ekunfi constituency, market shared Ekunfi Nakwa presidential, CPP 2, PPP 6, NPP 48, NDC 122. Independent candidate, zero. NDP, zero. PNC, zero. And the total votes cast, 183. In the KEEA Daddy's Flats polling station, presidential, NPP, 157. NDC, 94. PPP, 46. CPP, 1. PNC, zero. NDP, zero. And the independent candidate obtained no votes. Rejected ballots, five. Total number of votes cast, 303. Staying in the central region, Cape Coast South constituency at the MDCC uh, Gigiano polling station. Presidential, CPP 1, NDP 0, NDC 297, PPP 6, NPP 353. PNC 0, and the independent candidate obtained one vote. The total votes cast 660, and there were two rejected ballots. In the Ashanti region now, and uh, I believe we've done Ashanti region already. So Evans, those are some of the results that have come through. We'll be bringing you more as and when they come.
much, uh, Araba Kum Singh, uh, with that update there. Uh, thank you very much, Araba Kum Singh, uh, with that update there from our uh, collation center, uh, where a team of uh, journalists and uh, accountants and uh, mathematicians uh, are, are guarded, uh, you know, pouring through all these figures coming through from across, from across the country. Uh, Raymond Aqua uh, will join us very shortly. Uh, because we are feeding all that information into that centralized, uh, you know, location uh, that uh, gives us uh, a national sense of what is happening uh, across the country. And uh, Araba was going through some of the key constituency uh, polling station results from across the country, from King Tampon North, um, from uh, Sola to Nakaba, uh, also from the eastern region, Manfi South, the central region, KEE again, we've been to... Idrasa Chujumase in the Ashanti region. And we're getting, a, we're getting all these results coming in at this point. We've just analyzed already um, what the party should be doing. And I think, it, uh, Dr. Benya, you mentioned the bit about, I'm going to call my polling agents. How important are they going to? Remember in the, in the 2012 um, dispute, when it went to the, the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court's central point to the MPP was that elections are won. I mean, the lesson they took out of, of the whole process. Elections that one of the polling station. Mm -hmm. And so all these results we are talking about here tonight. Remember also what happened then when some of the polling, the results sheets were not signed by the polling station, polling agents, because they felt there was an issue there, you know. Uh, so it just brings us to the point, how important the polling agents will be tonight. Now that the polling station results are coming in, in verifying, defending the interest of their presidential candidate and their parliamentary candidates? They are very essential. They are very important in um, making sure that the results as they came in are counted in the right way. And also to enable the, um, the candidates and their watch party to be able to um, make rightful decisions as to the figures they are getting. Mm. If they are getting it directly from them and if they are being confirmed, at least they are sure of the way that they are faring at the polling stations. And the more they get the right result, the more they get credible results, the more they can begin to make the analysis, make the comparison, as uh, Dr. Drew said, with the uh, previous election. So it's very important that they are getting to them in areas where the results have not been fully counted, get them to know that you are there you are supposed to be vigilant. Make sure that you protect mm. this result because it's not finished until it's finished. Absolutely. And I can tell you, and, and I know the NDC has a very up-to-date, ultra-modern ICT center of a sort at the headquarters. And I'm pretty sure at this moment, they are, cause, and, and they showed us a bit of that when they did their primaries across the country. They were very efficient in collecting the results and knowing what was happening. And we, we possibly might just be crawling on your election headquarters because they, they will have, you know, direct links to these agents bringing in up-to-date results. But let me bring you in, Dr. Franklin Odro, on the role of these agents. You've been training them, emphasizing how important you've been, helping us with the manuals, etc. What can a polling station agent, a, a polling agent do at this moment if you have an issue with the results? We've heard already from Justice joining us from... Nima. Mm -hmm. The MPP guys are saying, and the police are saying, reject, we, we, we run, we're not going to accept this. Um, they're not even asking for a recount. They say, cancel the whole process. I mean, I'm just curious to know, what, what, within the limits of the law, what are they allowed to do if you have, a, if you have an issue? Well, well, I think it's important to remind ourselves, you know, the, the rationale behind, you know, the presence of party agents or pulling agents. And I think it is one of the trusts uh, mechanisms that we have in the electoral process that you know whatever goes on on the elections or the le uh, polling day uh, party agents or poll agents are there to verify to confirm uh, and to uh, append their signatures to uh, say that look I, I confirm and I agree with whatever goes on and at this stage where ballots are being uh, sorted out and are being counted uh, the role of party agents are critical. Uh, this is where that after being at the polling station from you know 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. Uh, you know this is where you have to find your energy. You yeah. know, uh, you, you, you no matter what, you have to get your energy back to open your eyes and and be vigilant because the 
uh, there, are, there are a couple of times on, on pulling day that uh, the, 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 some, of, some people call the lean season. So between, you know, three, four, five, uh, you know, if you're not careful, a lot of things can go wrong. Mm. Uh, and also at the counting stage, uh, you may be tired. In fact, that is the main reason why one of the reforms that the Electoral Commission has done is to introduce new coalition center officials. Oh, yeah. So that it's not the returning officers who work during the day uh, to continue to do the coalition at night. Uh, and so party agents are critical. You know, you, you, your duty is to ensure that the process that goes on the counting and the tabulation of votes at the polling station, uh, you agree to that. And then once you append your signature, that is what uh, the electoral commission is going to use. And then your role is also to communicate to your immediate uh, supervisor. as a look, at this polling station, this is what we got, uh, so that they can also take it uh, a, a step forward. You know, but coming back to your question about NEMA, the, the, the electoral commission published a guide for party agents on what the do's and don'ts. Okay. Um, you know, there are rules governing uh, a situation that you think might be overweight. It's, it's not necessarily have to be, you know, you don't agree and therefore you said, you know, I don't agree. You, yeah. have, to, you have to follow the rules. So what does the rule say? Uh, the rule says that uh, in, in a situation where the ballots that you find in the box, so the, the, both the valid and then the rejected ballots, uh, so the box in the box, if they do not match with the total number of voters verified and biometrically verified, manually verified, then there could be a, a case of overvoting. Okay. And, and I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, the, the, the rule or the understanding is that uh, once there is more votes uh, in, the, mm -hmm. in the box than uh, verified both manually and biometrically, then uh, you cancel. I that. see. I mean, that, that I remember when we were at the Electoral Reform Committee period, one, we, we, we had extensive conversation uh, on this. And, and there was a point that I think, uh, you know, there was a suggestion, well, if it's about one or two votes over, uh, is there a way that you can find a way to isolate that one mm -hmm. or two instead of canceling the whole total votes and thereby disenfranchising a lot of people? A lot of people. Uh, I'm not too sure if this was agreed by IPAC. I think. Uh, the discussion was that what the moment is more than you know cancel. The, can, cancel. Uh, I guess that's why that that explains why the MPP what, what the PP is, is talking about. But, uh, but before you can do that, you also have to uh, have do what we call the ballot reconciliation. You see, at every stage in the polling process, you know, and so the, once you finish with presidential ballot cast, you have to reconcile how many ballot papers were issued to this polling station. How many of them were issued to voters? How many of them were spoiled ballots? That you can, first of all, before you open the ballot, you can have a sense, okay, we received 200. Uh, out of the 200, 150 went. Three of them were spoiled. So what remains to be mm. given? On use will be 47. Uh, and therefore, when we go into the ballot box, we should expect 150. Mm -hmm. That 150 could be a valid vote and could be rejected ballot. Yeah. So if you did all those, uh, you should be able to account for the extra three, assuming mm. uh, you know, there's an extra three mm. in the ballot box. If you do the ballot reconciliation, how many on use, how many spoiled, how many were actually cast into the box, you should be able to, do. unless of course, when you do all of those things, and still, at the end of the day, you have more than 200. So you have 203 ballots yeah. that, you know, even though you were given 200, after all the reconciliation and when you enter the parliamentary box you have three more then there are foreign materials yeah that that needs to be dealt with yeah, i've just been updated uh, right now by okay. my producers that uh, in fact ipad agreed mm -hmm. that if there there's more than what was was properly accounted Accountable. for at the beginning you cancel you cancel yeah. but they also added a the small caveat. exception which is that if the results if cancelled, will have a significant impact on the on the results for overall. the constituents overall results. Then rerun. Mm -hmm. So so that was, that was the agreement. Mm -hmm. So, so if rerun that particular polling re, station. Exactly, rerun that particular polling station. Yeah. If it's going to be significant to either the part the constituency, so, so the for national. So instance, if you cancelled uh, a total vote of of maybe hundred, 
and then the rest, the difference was maybe 50 or 40, then that may be significant. Absolutely. In terms of that, we don't know where that 100 will go. Yeah. yeah. So we run that. So that, that, that's the understanding. Okay. And you, you hear that play out in the, in the NEMA case because um, there's one group that says we run, the other group that says cancel. Yeah. You know, so they, so they need to find a way Yeah, of, but at this point, they cannot determine it, exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. You have to wait for, for all the other everything points, else yeah. to... Uh, it, it brings about the question whether there's a time limitation on this because I remember in the 2012 election challenge, the, the MPP guys had a, the law has specified a time frame within which mm. after after the polls have been declared, you you can file, and if you don't file within that period, you sort of lose your right. I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. if you have if you have any other if you want to share with us, we're very happy to have that um, because that then will inform the agency of the situation. Mm -hmm. If the guy knows that. He hasn't got time according to law, then obviously he's then, you know, um, going to push a bit more for this. And Raymond will be joining very shortly uh, with the global picture. We've been updating the results. The last time we brought you a key race alert, we had 50 polling stations across the country, and then and Nando was in the lead. Um, um, but um, we'll be bringing you the very latest because we updated all these polling stations quite significantly since then. Uh, we'll bring you the global picture very shortly. Now, um, uh, we understand that there's wild jubilation of our results, provisional, the provisional results um, in, in uh, Sekendi, in the Western region. Uh, Manchinisaki, uh, Manchinisaki uh, is live there uh, for us. Hello, Manche. Hello, Manche. Hello? Hello, Manche. Yes, Manche, what can you report in, uh, in Sekendi, Western region? Of course, and I understand why you can't hear me. Obviously, because of the the, the background jubilation uh, in the second day uh, area there. And I'm curious to know whether this is a, a polling station or is a collation center results that we are getting that uh, has prompted. And I can hear people already, as you call in, in, in Ghana, they are Shin Jama in the background. Uh, if you're listening to us and you're foreign and you can understand anything about, uh, you know, the slang, a Ghanaian slang, Shin Jama simply means, um, yeah, Shin Jama. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, don't mind me. It's simply be excited and, and singing and da dancing. Um, in, in this case, as I can hear in the background, uh, whistling and, and going across the Prince Paul Street, clapping in an excited, jubil jubilant mood. Um, that's in, in a very long sense. That is what Shin Jama means. Uh, hello, Manche. Hello? Yes, Manche. So where are you and what's happening? I'm at the second consensus. And and collation center. Oh, really? This is the collation center for second D? Yeah. What do, do you have final results? We don't have the final results yet. But yes, we have a whole lot of people here and they've started jubilating. And what is, what, what is the basis of that jubilation if we don't have the final results? Let me let, me, let, me, let, me let you talk to uh, one or two of the... Hello, come around. Your name? Uh, why are you jubilating? FPP. You are jubilating because of FPP. Yes. But the results are not yet in. Yes. But why are you jubilating? I didn't I didn't I didn't know. I didn't yeah, I did, I did, I did, and I just let me quickly do some translation here. Thank you, Manche. Thank you for that update uh, from right. Second D. Uh, so essentially, uh, they are jubilating because they believe the MPP either is winning or has won, uh, and so they are jubilating. Listen. Do not put yourself in a situation where you get a heart attack. <laughs> I, I, I need to tell you this. If you're listening to us anywhere in the country, do not put yourself in a situation where you get a heart attack. Too early to be jubilating. Far too early to be jubilating anywhere you are in the country. Hold tight. Wait. Listen to your election headquarters. Right about 12 a.m. going into you know, the wee hours in the morning. Um, we can give you something concrete. Um, that you can work with. But if you go out there jubilating, the sounds we had there, very excited, thinking, oh, NDC, we're winning. Listen, you're putting yourself in a very, very dangerous situation because elections, as we know, can turn in a split second mm -hmm. because many dynamics and factors are at play. I'm pretty sure people are listening to us, listening to other stations, and getting the same sense from these polling stations and you know, the regional and national pictures and as it comes in. 
and they're thinking that is a trend. It's not a trend yet. It's just a beginning. Um, and so it, it's, we have a long night ahead. Um, and so just a note of caution there. Um, even for us here, we, we're seeing a lot more coming in. The checking that we are going through to make sure that this reflects in the software, you won't believe it. So don't let anybody tell you that he's winning. Wait for election headquarters to tell you something more concrete because we will do so. Uh, frankly, this is important. This is a very important point I was making to people earlier yep. about don't go out there jubilating yet. I, I, and this is strange because they don't even have the coalition center results. And, 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 and they're on the streets they, they drumming and dancing. They, they probably jubilate on one police station figure. That's you very know. true. And, and, and uh, so I think it's, uh, and you're right, elections, uh, you know, if you're not careful, you can get a heart attack on that. You, Absolutely. You, you, you have to wait for all the, uh, you know, polling stations, results come together, uh, and then you can get a better sense of, of, of what is going to happen. And yeah. then you can jubilate. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so I think uh, it's too early. It's just how uh, many hours? Four hours plus? Yeah. Uh, so we should, we, sh we should wait for a little while. Hold on. Yeah. Hold, Hold on. on. Yeah. We have a long way to go. Yeah. We're going to stay with you. That's, a, yeah. that's the only part about this that I'm happy about. We're going to be with, we're going to be with you throughout um, the program. Now, in the next hour, uh, approaching 12 a.m., uh, we're going to bring you a special uh, reporting from across the country, but also the very latest results. Samsung, Ladia Yenini, uh, is standing by to take over very shortly. Guess who's going to join him um, when uh, you know, we make that switch? Tarzan is going to join him. Charles Rokubobe is going to be here uh, as we begin the countdown to the official results. Uh, we're also going to have uh, Mr. Daudu of the NDC, uh, NDC com uh, legal team joining us uh, later on. Tomorrow, note, we're going to have Ace Ankuma joining us also here on your election headquarters. Uh, this is going to continue until we get... Final result on the EC, but we also can make a projection that, you know, we'll settle it on next. Um, we understand there's some, we're going to Kankwe South, constituents in the Greater Accra region. There's some confusion at the coalition center there. At the Accra Academy Coalition Center, Kuku Aban is live. Hello, Kuku. Hi, Evans. Kuku, what's, what's happening where you are? Well, Evans, there was this presiding officer. I understand he brought his materials from Avino, unaccompanied, no polling agent, no other official with him. He solely brought the uh, materials and, uh, you know, the statements of Pope and the rest. Mm. So while he was there, some people accosted him, supported him, and there was so much confusion. The police is there trying to even use their tickets to drive away people who have swarmed him and trying to investigate whether he stopped the ballot box, whatever he has in them. So currently, we are all outside. And it, it, it's a bit chaotic. Uh, people using their uh, mobile phone lights, spotlights, and so on to, you know, have a look in the box. Because the box was also not sealed. And mm. there was so much suspicion uh, surrounding this particular yeah. uh, deciding officer ever. Yeah, uh, Kuku, stay on the line for us. Stay on the line. Let me bring in Dr. Frank Lodro. There is a clear procedure mm -hmm. spelled out. Um, as far as what to do once a college, a polling center has finished counting and is transferring, I mean, what must the um, the presiding, the, the guy in charge of the coalition, the, the, what is it called? The, the return. The return. Now, now it's going to be coalition center official. Okay. Yeah. The coalition center official, what must he see to be absolutely certain that that box is coming from um, a designated, an officially designated? EC polling center. Yeah, so, I mean, as, as you know, every uh, 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 box, ballot box, has certain numbers. Uh, you know, the polling station code number is, is written, the polling station name is, is embossed on, 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 on the box. Mm -hmm. um, the declaration of resource form, known, popularly known as pink sheet, mm -hmm. uh, it should be accompanied with that. Okay. Uh, it should have the signatures of the polling stations confirming that this is the result that were declared uh, from this polling station. Uh, and then this is what I'm coming to present at the coalition center. So there are certain key features, uh, including uh, the, seal, the seals 
of, of the party the party agents because once and as we hear this particular box didn't have a seal i think uh, kuku just mentioned that. yeah so then then there, there, there's, there's, there's a problem i mean if it doesn't have a seal uh it doesn't mean that it doesn't have a seal for all the parties or let, some let me parties. just cross check that uh, hello kuku Hi, Kuku, just clarify one point for me that you mentioned. Did you say earlier that this particular box that was brought in had no seal on it? It doesn't have the seal. Now, there is, I think, a senior officer, um, official, is the official who's been invited, and he has received a number of seals. What they're doing right now is try to do, like, reconcile the figures he has on his statement of poll. And he's entering those data onto another sheet another form that he's got. And there, there's a lot of curiosity here. People, he's not even getting the space to enter the data, but he has seals that he's just introduced and we're trying to, you know, verify everything and then put the things back on the uh, ballot box. So this official is currently, I can say, and there are so many people swarming around. Him. In the meantime, what are the polling agents? Polling agents, the what are they doing? The polling agents are the ones who I think an observer from a distance raised an alarm. One of the police um, agents accosted him, started inquiring uh, of him why he's alone and why he's carrying so many things. The, the box, the box, I think two of them were unaccompanied. He was trying to move the Ghana must go um, bag in which he had most of the material. So the, he left the boxes unaccompanied. That's when wow. an agent started raising questions, where are his, uh, his, his team members and so on. So they started making moves on him. And now currently, what is being done is try to uh, address the issue, put the issues on them, and then perhaps take him inside so that we can resolve it. I mean, it, currently, it, I, I don't think it's working. Okay, it's not working. And that's the question I was coming to about security. Uh, it's dark. Um, anything could happen? Do we have adequate security there? There are, I, I can see about five or six police officers. Uh, they are armed, but because they are themselves trying to, if you like, assess and verify the documents in Europe, they have their guns around their necks. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty loose, and the crowd themselves are not allowing them to do it. Uh, the case that sometimes you see an officer come around, take people away, and then they'll come back. Uh, I, I say in Kuku that officers have been forced into using tasers. Say again, Evans. Are you saying that officers have been forced to use tasers? Yes, they are using tasers. I see. They are using tasers. But if they tase them and they move away, and they, they, they give the presiding uh, officer some assistance to be able to reconcile whatever he brought, then the crowd will move. Again, it's, it's really difficult for, for, for them right now. Uh, I see. Uh, Kuku, uh, Kuku, stay. You, we'll, we'll, we'll reconnect with you very shortly. Let's see how this is resolved uh, in that part of uh, Greater Accra. Well, of course, this is unfolding. Uh, security officers have been forced to use tasers. Uh, that tells you uh, what, what, how urgent that situation is there uh, in, in that part of the Greater Accra region. We'll be going uh, to the Dadekoto Pond constituency in the Greater Accra region. Confusion again, we're hearing. Two men arrested for attempting to force a ballot box open. Uh, they've been overpowered. A joint police and military team, we understand, um, you know, are on the ground trying to keep the situation under control. Bitu Sudu is joining us right now with the very latest on this. And this is one of the breaking news stories that we have coming in through right now. Hello, Beatrice. Hello, Evans. Uh, Beatrice, what, 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 this, this sounds pretty serious. Uh, how bad is it? What is it? How, what's happening there? You can hear the noise in the background right here. I'm currently in one of the halls at this uh, collation center, Naboni Senior High School. This is the collation center for the Gadis of Reform constituency where the electoral officers are expecting 200 uh, results from 200 polling stations. Uh, now, about an hour ago, I spoke to two men uh, about 30 minutes ago, but they told me that about an hour ago, they saw two gentlemen in a corner, that's around one of the classrooms where they kept okay. uh, some of the ballot boxes there, and they were making an attempt to open the ballot boxes, and when they approached them, they claimed that they wanted a refund of the ballot, uh, of the ballot papers in there, so they got as angry and said that if, if you want a refund, 
It has to be brought to the public where the EC officials and everybody is there so that everybody sees what's happening. And so they raised the alarm and then the police officers as well as top military men came around and they arrested them, they put them in handcuffs. I just had a confirmation from one police officer here that they have been sent to the cantonment police station. Uh, but even at the, uh, after this incident, there's so noise, I'm sure you can hear uh, some noise in the background. People are screaming. Majority of them saying, oh yeah, 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 mama, baba, literally meaning that no matter what you do, mama is going to come. So it, it's like, it's a constituency, and I'm sure you know that this is a constituency that has been dominated by the NDC for some time now. It's going to show me, Amasanda Mwale won, and this year, there's a new candidate for the NDC, Vincent Showa, and so uh, in both parties, the supporters for both parties, uh, I, if I could put it in, in one person, a word, red eyes, looking at how things are going to ensure that nobody is treated in this constituency. But they are still trying to calm the situation, the PC officials, as well as the police and the military. I mean, these two gentlemen, are they polling agents? Who are they? I have not had anybody to tell me exactly who they are, but those gentlemen who claim that they saw them doing that, told me that they didn't see them as any agent. But one of them is an agent, the other said he's just an ordinary voter. And the one who's an agent didn't confirm to me that he's one of those agents that he saw when he was going around during the uh, voting period. And so uh, we are yet to confirm their identity. So, so as we speak, as you said, they've been whisked away, <coughs> pardon me, whisked away to the cantonment police station. But what, what, what is happening at, the, at this polling station now? In terms, in, in terms, in terms of the ballots, the ballot boxes, etc. Yeah, yeah they, they have not started counting yet. Like I said, uh, this polling center is expecting results from 300. Uh, sorry, this collection center actually mm -hmm. is expecting results from 300 polling centers. Uh, I assume that a number of them are still coming in because they have not started counting yet. Those that have already come in, I'm actually in one of the rooms where the EC officers are sorting things out so that when they are ready to count before the public comes to go through that. But officially, counting has not started. They are still sorting out the ballot. So do we still have a the military police deployment still stationed there at the at this collation center? Do we still have the police and military uh, deployment still on the ground there at the collation center? There are still policemen here and military men here, fully armed military men as well. They are started, um, some of them are at the place where the incident started, others are just still at first. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and that is an important, uh, uh, you know, breaking piece of breaking news. We have another breaking news coming in, uh, this time from the Bonahafa region in the Brickroom East. Counting, we understand, has been halted. The MPP agents do not have their pink sheets, we understand. Uh, Chrissy Buedu is live uh, on the scene, at the scene for us. Hello, Chrissy. W what can you report as far as this particular concern is concerned? Hello. Can you hear me, Chrissy? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so what, what's the situation exactly in uh, Brikum East? Yeah, in Brikum East, out of 101 police centers, just five of them have been projected. Uh, this is because, in the course of the projection, the MPP is objecting that uh, their faces are not ready with them, and so they have to move on for them to bring their team for the presenter, uh, candidates before they can proceed with the um, projection of the results. And so that is what is really happening now. But out of the five polling stations that have been coalitioned, NPP has 1,518 1, votes and NDC has 563 votes. And 500 and, so, sorry, sorry uh, Chrissy, uh, okay. uh, out, of, out of how many polling stations? Five polling stations. Five polling stations, and this yes. is in the Bonahafu region, correct? Yes, in, in the Brikum East constituency. Uh, and the M NPP there has 1518. 1518. And the MPP has? 563. Sorry, the NPP has 1518. The NDC has 500. 563. 563. 563. 563. Okay. CDP2. Okay. NDP1. Okay. Okay. Now. CNC1. 
Okay, now let, let, let's let's quickly return. So let, let me just for those who join us on this five polling stations in Brickroom East, MPP is leading there uh, with one five one eight one thousand five hundred eighteen. As against the NDC's 563. Let's return to the story about the pink sheets. I mean, is this a coalition center? Yes, at a coalition center. At a coalition center. Yes. Uh, is that to suggest that at this particular constituency, all the polling stations have already reported in at the coalition center? Yes, every single uh, polling station has reported. Have they started counting yet? Yeah, they started the counting, but then they have to hold because of. The objection that was raised by the NPP because they didn't have their pink sheet for them. I see. Uh, so where are the pink sheets for the MPP? Uh, have they found it? Is it missing? Uh, they are now bringing it from the NPP uh, party office. Okay. Okay, great. Um, but so, but there's calm. I can see people in an excited mood behind you. Yes. Uh, these are the NPP supporters because as of now we are here, there are other municipalities or constituencies that their results are coming in suggesting that some of the NDC parliamentary candidates have lost their seats to the NPP. And they are also rejoicing concurrently with the results that are being projected over here, uh, uh, supposing that the uh, NPP has left the polls as now we are talking about, with the five uh, uh, polling stations that have been polling. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kwesi, there from uh, Kwesi Bweru, live from Brickroom East constituency there. Um, and, and that's interesting because what it means is that in many, many places, the coalition center activity has, uh, has begun, and this is where the action really is. That's when you begin to understand uh, what is really happening uh, across uh, the country and in the constituencies there. And so we have many incidents to report on, and they, a, a lot to discuss, in fact, um, from the very curious case of the Laboni uh, coalition center where two gentlemen have been arrested. The allegation is that he attempted to break into a, a ballot box. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty curious to know, um, uh, Dr. Brenya, you listen to that and what runs through your head? I mean, at this moment, why would anybody risk his life to get close to a ballot box and attempt to break into it? That's a question that I'm asking myself because uh, sometimes you can't get into the psyche of people. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? Why on earth would you do I mean, all the warnings. I think that probably uh, this is happening because uh, our laws are soft on those individuals. That is why they keep on repeating some of this. Uh, I thought that um, looking at what we've uh, uh, experienced from the morning to this point, yeah. I thought we were not going to have this sort of cases because uh, those tend to happen early on in previous election. But it's mm -hmm. interesting that just at the tail end, we are um, um, actually hearing stories of that sort. Yeah, and, it, it's uh, been smooth so far. Exactly. But, but, but it's understandable. This is, this is, this is crunch time. Mm -hmm. I mean, forget about what happened during the day. If you, if you, if you blink an eye right now, you, you, you're gone. You're gone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're so, gone. so you understand why there's, there's so much no. passion and tension. No, I, right? mean, uh, I agree. I think but the fundamental question is why would we want to do that? Why yeah. would people want to do that? But, uh, you know, this, this is also the moment that a lot of these things do happen, especially you know, at places where the counting will go deep into the night. Mm -hmm. And if there, there's no you know, uh, substantial lighting system, if there are no security people, people will dare, people will try to, 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 to change the way things are being done. Of mm. course, I mean, um, you know, it's a human society. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, people will still want to try if they can succeed. But I think it's important at this stage that the security agencies, this is where the security agencies double, will, their game. Will double their game, have to be very professional um, and, and, and sort of make sure that all those people who uh, will try to uh, undermine the, the, uh, the will of the people in terms of you know, uh, trying to take away ballot boxes uh, you know, or try to cause problems so that the people who have woken up from 3 a.m., 4 a.m. queue uh, cast their votes, yeah. uh, and then you just want to destroy that. You know, you know, it's it's not it's not known in any democracy, yeah. uh, and it's something that uh, we have to we have to condemn. Such and, and and I hope that if the security agencies arrest some of these people, we, we punish them. You know, through the law courts, mm -hmm. so that it serves as a deterrent for others who want to do that. Okay.
we have a key race alert I need to bring you quickly right now. Um, coming in from the bottom half of region right now, and Raymond is going to join us with, with more. But this is a very important key race alert. Uh, and this is in the Sunyani East um, constituency. And these are so far, uh, of course, uh, the, the out of the, the, the it's, it's been counted at the collation center. And, and these are the certified results uh, from 19 polling stations out of 166 polling stations in Sunyani East. Um, I want to go through the result, that, those results for you from these 19 out of 166 shortly. Um, CPP has four, NDP has one, NDC has 1,559, that is 1,559, and PPP has 46, MPP has 3,428, PNC has three, Independent has 14. Now, this constituency is, uh, is held uh, by the NPP. Uh, MPP's Honorable Chrissy Amayal Treme uh, is, uh, is the incumbent member of parliament uh, for this particular uh, constituency uh, in, in the uh, Sunyani East constituency. And the MPP is out of the 19 polling stations uh, counted and certified so far. Uh, and, and that is out of 166 polling stations. The MPP is leading uh, that race at the presidential level uh, with 3,000. 428 NDC 1,559. Uh, Bonahafu is key because it's a swing region. Uh, and so uh, we'll watch that unfold uh, here on your election headquarters. I want to say a big thank you to my guests for now because we're moving into the next hour, next phase of our coverage tonight uh, where something that I uh, will be taking over shortly. We'll be expecting uh, in the studio uh, Dr. Charles Rekubobe, uh, who will join us very shortly, uh, also here on, on the program. Uh, and so you, you, will, you will stay with us. You want to stay with us because uh, we won't, we're not going to blink an eye <laughs> as far as uh, the results are concerned. Remember, election headquarters is, ref is refreshed by Papa's Pizza. Taste it, love it. Cowbell coffee, smile and have a sunshine day. Also, um, remember... Uh, key thing uh, here, as far as the election headquarters is concerned, uh, that uh, the election results uh, are brought, the updates are brought to you by Macdan Shipping, your total logistics partner, and NNIT enrolled for quality computer education in Ghana. Um, we'll take a short break, but before we do that, I'm going to cross over to Araba Kumsi, who is in the collation center, uh, has uh, some latest updates as far as the results are concerned, and, and then we'll cross over to our next segment where, where my colleague, uh, Samson Ladayini, will take over with his own uh, guest. This is your lecture headquarters. Hello, Araba. Hello, Araba. Do we have Araba on the line? Coming in thick and fast. Let's start off from the greater Accra region. Uh, Global Revival Church, that's a polling station here in the Okayan Kray South constituency, presidential, NDC 129, NPP 274, CPP 0, PPP 3, NDP 1, PNC 0, and the independent candidate also received no votes. Total valid votes cast 407, two ballots were rejected. In the Shai Osudoku constituency and the ICCES uh, Metete Dodowa polling station, presidential results are as follows. NPP 177, NDC 260, CPP 4, PPP 9, NDP 0, PNC 0. And the independent candidate obtained one vote. Six ballots were rejected, and the total valid votes cast 451. In the Volta region, in Quanta South, DA JHS School, presidential, CPP 0, NDP 0, NDC 168, PPP 0, NPP 154, PNC 0, and the independent candidate received four votes. There were 13 rejected ballots. Total votes cast, 339. Also, uh, in whole West constituency, still in the Volta region, 
the Agudome Secondary School polling station, presidential CPP 0, NDP 1, NDC 305, PPP 1, NPP 24, PNC 0, independent candidate 0. There were no rejected ballots. Number of uh, valid voters, 331. To Sunyani now, and uh, to the Buno Ahafu region rather, and Sunyani East constituencies, and uh, out of the 166 uh, polling stations, the EC has verified results uh, of 19 polling stations, and these are the results. CPP, and this is presidential, CPP 4, NDP 1, the NDC 1,559, the PPP 46, NPP 3,428, PNC 3, and the independent candidate obtained 14 votes. Upper West Region, Wild West constituency, which is our primary presidential, CPP 6, NDP 1, NDC 335, PPP 3, NPP 316, PNC 5, and the independent candidates obtained 25 votes. There were 20, uh, 23 rejected uh, ballots. And the number of uh, voters there is uh, 714 in total. Still in the upper, to the upper east now in Bogatanga Central. Bogat Nursery School, presidential results, CPP 0, NDP 0, NDC 66, PPP 0, NPP 22, PNC 2, and the independent candidate obtained no votes. Uh, valid votes cast 90, rejected 0. Upper East again, and uh, Chiana Paga Chiefs Palace, presidential results. CPP 1, NDP 54, NDC 89, PPP 14, NPP 94, PNC 2, and the independent candidate, zero. Total votes cast, 254. And there were 14 rejected ballots. So these are some of the results as they come in. Evans. Araba, thank you. Thank you very much uh, we're, we're, we're for bringing us that update here on your election headquarters. We'll join in very shortly, Araba. Stay with us because something's going to uh, take over very shortly uh, because we're getting some of the collation center results from the constituencies. And so we're going to get uh, the first uh, constituencies coming in with their results, presidential and parliamentary, uh, in this next uh, phase of our coverage as we build up on election night to the final results. And I must tell you, I just saw the magic wall. The picture is pretty interesting right now as far as the national picture is concerned. You don't want to miss that for anything the next part when something takes over. And remember, he's going to have a very important guest joining him. Dr. Charles Rokubobi in this hour is going to join him. Raymond is standing by with the magic war and the very latest results. We're going to give him a national uh, outlook as far as the results are concerned. You want to stay with us here on your election headquarters. My name is Evan Mensa. This is election night on your election headquarters. Stay with us. Election night on your election headquarters.
of a long and heated presidential race. I place my destiny in your hands. Yet it's a castle. It's what come there. Your election network has become election. Ghanaians are waiting for the last word on who will occupy the front The fight for the president. We are not going to give them another four years. The battle for parliament. We need PPP members in parliament. Bringing a proof word and the MPP to lift our country up and get Ghana working again. Get Ghana all the going. issues, all the angles, all the results on the longest night of the year, from the first vote to the final vote. President Mahama does not have the political will. President Mahama, what's not the first to know election night on your election headquarters. A comprehensive coverage of the 2016 elections on your election headquarters on TV, on radio, online and mobile.